Hello, hello. 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 Yeah, this is better. Thank you. Hi, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the session on best practices for effective team management. Uh, I'm Akshata. I'm marketing lead at OpenSense Labs. OpenSense Labs is a Drupal agency based out of India. Uh, we create awesome digital products and uh, uh, great Drupal related services to organizations globally. Uh, and I had a co-speaker, unfortunately, he did not uh, get the visa on time, so here I am alone. Um, so uh, before we start this session, uh, let's start uh, with a why. Uh, why is uh, team management important, and uh, why are we talking about it, discussing it in this conference? Um, anyone from the audience? Any guesses? OK. Um, so some would say uh, maybe for productivity uh, to uh, ensure that things are being done on time. Right. Um, so yes, um, for uh, the success of uh, your project, uh, it, it ma uh, majorly is dependent on uh, the people. Uh, it's uh, the people you are working with. Uh, they can make or break this, uh, your project. Uh, they can turn ordinary uh, performance into extraordinary. They can also uh, give technical solutions the oomph that will produce outstanding results. And so since we are working uh, with them, we should care about them. <coughs> Alone as managers, um, we cannot actually deliver uh, the projects neither on time nor with that quality that we can with a team. Moving on, uh, let's talk about uh, team effectiveness. What are the characteristics uh, of an effective team? Uh, majorly, they can be uh, described into three uh, points, team output, collaborative ability, individual learning, and well-being. Uh, so when we are talking about uh, team output, um, we are majorly covering here if uh, your team is able to achieve their targets uh, or exceed the expectations in time. Uh, this is one of the primary uh, characteristics of an effective team. And as project managers or uh, marketeers, it's easy to identify uh, uh, if uh, you know uh, we have uh, if your team overall is effective or not, uh, since we have quantitative measures to cover them. Uh, collaborative ability. Uh, this is another important characteristic, uh, since uh, as a, as, a, as a team, uh, effective teams who uh, work together uh, will get to know each other better. Uh, as uh, uh, they, they learn how to work with each other better and uh, coordinate their activities uh, better. So uh, moving on to uh, individual learning and well-being. Uh, effective teams posi uh, positively contribute to the learning and well-being of each other. Team members being part of the team can help expand knowledge. As team members, we should be looking forward to learning new things uh, from each other, if not daily, uh, then maybe monthly or uh, weekly. Yeah, uh, we'll move on to uh, the, chal uh, the challenges of uh, team management. These are some of the common challenges. Uh, of course, the list is very long, and uh, these are some of only uh, a few that have been mentioned. Uh, in remote work environment, especially, lack of common trust can become a huge hurdle. Uh, poor uh, communication, uh, not in terms of skills, but miscommunication can often happen when you have large dispersed teams. Uh, there's a lack of clarity in the goals and the tasks assigned. Uh, maybe there is over-dependence on a team leader or any particular member working in isolation. Team members have been working alone for a long time, and so they uh, have this uh, issue of, uh, they have this challenge of working in a team effectively, which can uh, again hamper the team performance and individual performance as well. And then interpersonal co conflicts. And as managers, it's important for us to uh, you know, resolve them and still be able to work together effectively. So um, these are some of the factors uh, that, uh, we'll, uh, that we will be uh, talking about. Uh, these have been majorly identified uh, by uh, Richard Hackman, if you have uh, heard about him. He, is, he, he was a pioneer in uh, team management practices, and he was also a professor. Uh, so we'll start with direction. <coughs> so um, to ensure that your team works effectively, uh, there needs to be a common direction, a common goal, uh, where, uh, you know, that everyone in the team knows about. Uh, this means uh, you need to set up a goal which is clear, 
it's challenging and it uh, enough sufficient consequence uh, to motivate your team members to strive to work together uh, then uh, we come to the structure of the team uh, this can again if uh, affect the effectiveness uh, of uh, your output and delivery uh, the team structure, uh, its uh, conduct, the way it organizes and works uh, its on, on its tasks has to enable uh, teamwork and not impede it. Uh, let's say uh, there, there's a team of developers, uh, of, of 20 developers, and there is one senior uh, developer who is leading the project, right? Uh, in that case, in, uh, if for every uh, small uh, concern or uh, help every developer has to reach out to this one person the team structure itself will fail uh, you know the output it will create a bottleneck uh, and so uh, will affect the out uh, effectiveness of the entire team performance uh, uh, an easy solution uh, to this would be a better structure where you can have mid level resources aligned three or four uh, mid level uh, developers who can uh, who the junior resources can directly reach out and the senior uh, uh, developer can work together with these three or four people to overall work on the project outcome. Um, then we have uh, communication. Uh, we, so uh, effective communication is is very very critical, and I can't emphasize enough or, or, or enough on it. Uh, it distributes the needed information between the team members, and it enables uh, them to build a cooperative work relation. Uh, so. In my previous organization, uh, we had an experiment where uh, there were six to seven people from different teams who, did, who have never worked together with each other. Uh, uh, we were sitting with a performance coach, and uh, we started to uh, one of uh, one of us was assigned uh, was asked to put down a work-related problem that she was currently facing. Uh, five minutes later, everyone was discussing on the solution, and no one was able to come to a common consensus. Where the performance coach asked us to stop, and we realized that everyone had a different, uh, everyone interpreted the problem differently. And no one was remotely, uh, re you know, uh, close to what the actual problem was. And this was the case when everyone was sitting in the room together in a proximity of uh, one meter, I would say. Uh, so in remote uh, teams, this can become a major challenge, which needs to be uh, addressed effectively. Uh, then we have support. Uh, so having a supportive context uh, within the organization allows the team to work effectively. Uh, this means uh, that the team is receiving uh, and uh, adequate resources, rewards, information, and cooperation or the support from the organization, if not immediately from the team, to do the work. Uh, we'll come to the best practices now. So. Uh, in our company, we have been following uh, some of these, uh, almost all of these uh, practices. Some of this uh, we are uh, planning to adopt. And uh, whatever we have uh, done has really worked well for us. Hmm. So uh, then, uh, we'll, uh, compelling uh, direction. Uh, yes. So uh, setting direction helps uh, your teams to create important uh, factors like uh, important factor like accountability team synergy is created and uh, sustained through your visions uh, goals and milestones uh, in our team uh, we ensure that uh, we have our team goals uh, yearly goals uh, at least documented and everyone in the team uh, new members old members uh, repeatedly we revise we go through them uh, to understand where we are if we are on track uh, what are the goals that we missed what are the goals uh, that we have achieved and those that we have achieved uh, the milestones that we have achieved we celebrate them it's it's important that uh, you know uh, the team fe feels uh, their work is being acknowledged and uh, yes celebrated uh, solid structure in place so we already discussed uh, how a poor structure can uh, you know uh, really hamper team performance so um, we'll start with the setting up of basic team rules. These can be very unique to your own teams. Uh, I have, I'm a sports person. So uh, when I was in sports, when I was uh, young, uh, my coach, every time, uh, like there was this one basic rule. Uh, every time we tried something new and someone said no, uh, they were punished. They were asked to go for a duck walk for 100 meters, which would remind them every uh, like uh, what the team rules are, how, uh, you know, uh, how, how to uh, function. Uh, 
affect so uh, words hold that power they affect our psychology and uh, when you say no in the first instance uh, there is a negative uh, thought process that uh, you know uh, goes on and uh, you are focusing more on the challenge rather than on the solution uh, in personally in my team we we like to uh, for for any new challenge uh, any new task that we are working on or are assigned we like to say this is something new and i would want to learn more about it instead of saying no i can't do it uh, so uh, this also sets up basic expectations uh, within the team from uh, like it, it goes both ways um, assigning clear roles and responsibilities uh, Often it happens. Um, I'm not sure about the larger organi bigger organizations, but in smaller agencies, we are wearing uh, like uh, hats with multiple feathers, and almost everyone is as skilled as uh, any other uh, team member. Which means there will be an overlap of skills, roles, and responsibilities. Which again means uh, that sometimes there's an assumption that the other person would take care of it, and the task is uh, left unattended. Right. So. Uh, when you are setting up team goals, which we discussed in the previous slide, it's also important to uh, have individual roles and responsibilities assigned and aligned, uh, which would also give uh, that sense of accountability to the uh, team members and uh, ensure that the tasks are being taken care of. Then comes the communication. Uh, set expectations and uh, debrief regularly. Uh, this is very important for uh, almost all the projects uh, that we take, short-term uh, marketing campaigns, long-term goals, uh, long-term projects. We ensure that we have a debrief set, uh, set at the end of the project. If not at the end of the project, if, uh, in case it's a longer one, we'll have one at the end of the week to, uh, to understand what are the challenges the teammates are facing and to address those challenges so those are not repeated. Uh, it's, it's often said that uh, it's not hard work that burns out the people, but rather the feeling that their work doesn't matter. When you address, address their challenges, uh, when you provide them right feedback, uh, it makes them feel heard. Uh, it creates a positive uh, mindset in the team and a positive culture. For remote teams, uh, you know, uh, these uh, tools can really help. Some of them are proprietary, some of them are free tools. Um, Providing support. Uh, so in in our, our organization, uh, whenever someone new joins the team, I um, ensure that other than uh, the ro their roles and uh, KPIs, we we have an informal catch up, where I would like to know what their goals uh, in life are, other than their work. It helps create a bond with the team member. It helps create that trust between uh, the new member uh, and your uh, manager. Uh, so. Recently, uh, a new team member joined my team. She's just out of college supporting her single mother, really hardworking girl. And I talked to her and I realized uh, that she wants to do uh, you know, a master's uh, MBA, which in India would cost you around um, 60,000 euros, which is a big deal in INR. So uh, we sat down, uh, discussed how she can uh, you know, achieve that goal other than work. What are the skills that she needs to uh, take care of? How much time uh, is she aiming for uh, for the MBA? What are the financial uh, challenges that uh, she might face? And uh, finally, what are the colleges uh, you know, uh, where she can apply? Uh, constantly, uh, we, we have a one-on-one -on -one catch up at the end of the month where we are both working on the, uh, where we are both talking about her um, work progress, as well as her uh, individual growth plan, what she has been doing, uh, how can she make the things better. Initially, uh, this will not give uh, good results, I would say. More or less, people uh, might would, would not you know, uh, fill in those sheets or uh, do as much as they can. But uh, with regular uh, you know, uh, sessions, that will really help uh, the team members also feel that uh, you know, it's not just the company goals or, or, or the team goals that matter, even their uh, like personal goals matter. Mm, then we have uh, providing a forum to discuss growing pains. Um, again, this is something uh, that uh, team members. This is something uh, that the team members uh, should feel they're being heard again. Uh, so. Uh, 
at the end of the month, we have one-on-one -on -one sessions, uh, one with the team member, uh, just between the team member and the RM, and the second where we have one with the someone from the people operations team, the HR team, uh, where we closely work on discuss, uh, understanding what were the, uh, you know, growing pain points and the challenges for that month, if they were able to reach their, uh, you know, uh, monthly KPIs or not, uh, how could uh, they do it better? And we also have an individual growth plan in place, which we recently started to understand, again, uh, what are their professional goals. So someone who's joined as a content writer might have a goal that in next uh, one or six, uh, one years or six months, they would want to be a digital marketer. So what are the skills that they need? Uh, we identify the courses uh, that, they, that might help them. Every month at the uh, in the in those one-on-one -on -one sessions, we also track the progress on those uh, uh, on those courses that they have done. Uh, we ensure that uh, you know uh, the, the learnings uh, from that session do not go unnoticed. We uh, track the learnings also, which uh, again uh, it, it's like telling that you cannot fool us. Uh, and uh, yes, that's it. And lastly, blowing some uh, blowing off some steam together. Uh, it's very important. Uh, when we were in office, uh, it was uh, a different culture. We we used to hang out together. We used to have water cooler chats, which was important to you know uh, just chill and get to know people together. That's not the case in remote. Currently, in, in this uh, picture, there are six people. One of them is a completely remote employee. Two of them are uh, hybrid employees, and uh, the remaining uh, come to office daily. Right, such catch-ups. Uh, so we have a quarterly catch-up called Chai Pe Charcha, which loosely tra translates to catch-up over tea. Again, there is a basic rule that you need to have uh, a drink, or some some sort of drink, uh, to participate in this, uh, you know, session. Uh, we we s we sit for around 45 minutes to one hour. We discuss uh, what are the things that we are doing in life. Uh, if you know, uh, it also helps understand personally like what the other person is going through I in in their personal life there there might be some personal issues that uh, may have you know caused uh, some uh, challenges in their work life so this these sessions really help uh, bring the team together so th these are the six people in the team and uh, yes support each other at the end of the day we are we all are humans and yeah we, we are working towards the same goals in any way in any capacity so yes uh, here's a quick recap. Uh, these are the four factors, direction, structure, communication, support. These are the activities uh, or uh, things that you can do to ensure that these are being taken care of for direction. Have a team vision documented. Set up team goals, regularly catch up on those goals, celebrate your milestones. For structure, set up a basic team rules, uh, assign clear roles and responsibilities to everyone. Set up your processes right. For communication, uh, actively participate in communication, ensure that every team member is being heard, uh, provide them regular feedback, and uh, set expectations and debrief regularly. To support your team members, leverage informal uh, meetups, and uh, try uh, whatever it is in your capacity. You might be a smaller organization, you might not be able to afford a performance coach, but you might have some senior mentors in your team who can help provide that guidance and coaching to, uh, to your team members. It's important that you are taking active steps uh, in you know, uh, helping your team members out. And then have a forum where everyone in the team feels free to discuss uh, their pain points. Doesn't matter if uh, it's about the other team member or about you as a manager to change your, uh, you know, practices. That's it. Thank you. Questions? Any questions? Thank you.